morning. Please join me in welcoming to the floor the Hofstra University Class of 2023. Thank you. 
Please be seated. On this glorious spring morning, it's my pleasure to welcome the Hofstra University class of 2023. I'm Charlie Reardon. I have the distinct privilege of serving as provost and welcoming you to this spring baccalaureate commencement exercises for the School of Health Professions and Human Services, the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, and the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which includes the Hofstra School of Education, the School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, the School of Humanities and Performing Arts, and the Peter Calico School of Government, Public Policy, and International Affairs. I'm thrilled to see the competitive nature of our students continues to this day. As a part of the foundation of our ceremony today, we gratefully acknowledge the native peoples on whose ancestral homes we gather, as well as the diverse and vibrant native communities who make their home here and throughout the state of New York today. We take a moment to recognize the original inhabitants of this territory, indigenous land, which we acknowledge as sacred territory, as the land of many tribes, including the Manicoc, Marix, and Massapequa in the miles around us. And now as we begin our, begin our program with the invocation delivered by Rabbi Dave Siegel, followed by the national anthem sung by Kyla Tarabaje, class of 2023, will everyone please stand in body or in spirit? Thank you and welcome Rabbi Dave. We've been through a lot together the last few years, huh? <laughs> Almighty God, as we gather here today with our Hofstra family to acknowledge and celebrate the accomplishments of our graduating students, we express our great thanks for allowing us to reach this special occasion. Grant your blessings to the parents, friends, faculty, and administrators that have supported and guided these students each day, and please give our amazing graduates the opportunity to make their dreams come true, the strength and knowledge to help make this world a better place, and the resources to accomplish what we know they're capable of. May these students always be a blessing to everyone whose lives they touch, and may it be your will, merciful God, that these students, and all of us, always bask in your blessings of health, happiness, and peace. And finally, please make sure they always remember that they have a home here at Hofstra University. And let us say, Amen. Oh, 
Please be seated. Now performing our alma mater is the Hofstra Voice Ensemble accompanied by the Hofstra University Commencement Band conducted by David Soto, Adjunct Associate Professor of Music and Director of Bands. The words to the alma mater are on the inside front cover of your program. I now have the pleasure of making some very special introductions, beginning with the chair of the Hofstra University Board of Trustees, Donald Schaefer. <laughs> also with us today is Trustee Stella Mendez. I'm also pleased to introduce our deans and ask them to please stand as you're introduced and please remain standing until all the deans have been announced. Warren Frasina. The Rabinowitz Honors College. <laughs> Kathleen Gallo from the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies and the School of Health Professions and Human Services. Janet Lenahan from the Va Frank G. Zarb School of Business. Mark Lukasiewicz, Lawrence Herbert School of Communication. Sina Rabani, the Fred DeMattis School of Engineering and Applied Science. Daniel Siebold, the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Please join me in welcoming all of our deans. Thank you. We're also pleased to welcome faculty leadership this morning. Bill Caniano, the chair of the University Senate Executive Committee, Will Nyrode, speaker of the faculty, and Karen Valerius, chair of the chair's caucus. Welcome. We are also joined by Hofstra's Vice Provost and Senior Administrators, who I'm pleased to introduce and recognize as a group. Thank you all for being here. And of course, the remarkable person who leads this university. Please join me in welcoming to the podium President Susan Poser. Thank you, Charlie. 
Congratulations to the class of 2023, and welcome, everybody, to Hofstra University's commencement. A special welcome to all of the parents and families and friends who are joining us this morning, and our commencement speaker and honorary degree recipient, Mr. Gregory Liebach, who will be more formally introduced shortly. To our graduates today, it probably feels today like the end of something big, and of course it is. Attaining a college degree is a great achievement and indicates that you have come through a time of intense learning in an academic environment, which was also likely a period of great personal growth and of growing up. Many of you made what will become lifelong friendships and spent hours and hours savoring those friendships on a daily basis. And in these ways, this commencement marks the end of a very distinct time in your lives. And as you leave this commencement, you will take with you a world-class education, as well as experiences outside of the classroom that come from completing projects, doing internships, participating in athletics, serving in student government and other student activities, engaging with the arts and serving the community. And I hope that this political, cultural, and civic engagement will continue to be an important part of your lives. Our collective future, our collective lives as a country and a world depends on this. And having attended Hofstra, you know what it is and you know how to do it. The idea of commencement, of course, is not just an ending of something big. In fact, the word itself signifies a beginning, a time to commence, a time to take all of your experiences at Hofstra, both in and outside the classroom, the lab, and the studio, and begin again as you move, move into work or graduate school or professional school or whatever it is that's coming next. And like most beginnings, commencement is an exciting time but also a time of great uncertainty. But you are ready to enjoy this excitement and to deal with any of the uncertainty. You have succeeded to getting in this place in your lives, this celebration of educational achievement, having attended college during a global pandemic. Remember that? <laughs> this is significant for your futures and will, in perhaps an unexpected way, serve you well. You all understand now something that before COVID, most people learn at a much later age, which is that your life, both your personal and your professional path, is not a road laid out in front of you on which you're now going to take a nice long walk. Life truly is what you make of it, and there are things that will happen that are completely out of your control. And it is how you react to those things, how you deal with them, the choices that you make in the face of uncertainty that will determine your path and your success. And most of us learn this much later in life, maybe when we have children or a tragedy in our lives or some other unexpected event. But you already know this, having started college and it was probably for most of you a pretty typical way with pretty typical expectations, and then you had to adapt. You learned at a young age that the one constant in life is change, sometimes unexpected and difficult change. And I hope you see that the pursuit of a good life, no matter how you define it, is not only about having goals and determination and some luck, as important as all of that is, but it's about how you adapt to change and the choices that you make within these new and unexpected contexts. And you have already done that in a most admirable way, and we know that because you're sitting here today. And this bodes so well for your future, and it fills me with pride. So on behalf of Hofstra University, I promise that we will always be your university, and we will continue to support you. Like you, we will continue to grow in strength and reputation, enhancing the value of your degree. And we will always strive to make you proud, just as you have and will continue to make us proud. After all, one measure of the greatness of a university is by the success and the humanity of its alumni, and you are now part of that legacy.
So again, my heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you. Thank you, President Poser. Now I have the privilege of introducing a very special video message from the senior senator from the state of New York, our nation's Senate Majority Leader, and a great friend to Hofstra University, the Honorable Chuck Schumer. Hello, Hofstra. This is Senator Chuck Schumer, and it's my honor to address the faculty and staff, the family and friends of the graduates, but most of all, you, the class of 2023. Congratulations. Now, I'm really sorry I can't join you in person, but I am sure celebrating with you in spirit. First, a quick note to the parents. As a parent, I know how hard it is to raise kids these days and how much you've invested in them. But it all pays off as you watch your son or daughter come up on stage, receive that diploma, and become an adult before your very eyes. So congratulations to the moms and dads. And now to the great class of 2023. The challenges of the last few years have been truly unique. I'm sure you expected your time in college to bring new experiences but that probably didn't include a global pandemic. But today, you've earned a degree from a truly fine institution of higher learning and nothing, nothing can take that away from you. You're graduating at a time of profound changes across the country and around the world. But here's the good news. Your generation is better equipped than any that's come before it to adopt to these changes, to overcome the obstacles they present and seize the opportunities they afford to pursue your passions and accomplish good and big things. Right now, though, it may feel like the future is uncertain. Many of you may not be sure what comes next, which I know sometimes can seem scary. But what has been true throughout history is just as true today, that even in times of profound changes, there are always new opportunities, new ways of thinking, of doing things a better way. So my advice to the class of 2023 is simple. Go for it. You've got great, great assets, a great education from a terrific institution of higher learning, and loving families that will have your backs through thick and thin. So garner your strength, garner your courage, put aside your doubts, take a chance. And if you do, it is my hope, it is my prayer, and indeed it is my confidence that you will find true success and joy in life. So to this great class of 2023, I say once again, congratulations. Good luck, Godspeed, and don't forget, go for it. I would now like to ask Donald Schaefer, Chair of the Hofstra University Board of Trustees, to offer his special welcome and to introduce his candidate for a Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Good morning. I would like to take a moment on behalf of the Board of Trustees to congratulate the class of 2023 on your graduation and welcome you, your families and friends to the celebration of your academic achievement. We are proud of you and acknowledge the hard work and determination that you have shown to get to this wonderful moment in your lives. We hope that you will follow your passions and are confident that your future will be exemplary. Please know that Hofstra will always be here for you as you go forward. You are an important part of the enduring bond of the Hofstra family, and we look forward to your leadership role in providing guidance and support to the Hofstra students who will be following in your footsteps. It is now my pleasure to introduce Gregory J. Leibach, Chief Legal Officer for the Communication Services Company, ZB Better Together. Prior to joining ZB Better Together, Mr. Leibach served as Chief of the Disability Rights Office in the Consumer and Governmental Affairs Bureau at the Federal Communications Commission. In this role, he was involved in a wide array of policy matters ensuring accessibility, including equal access to communication technologies. Mr. Leibach earned his BA at Gallaudet University, 
the world's premier higher education institution serving deaf and hard of hearing people. In 1998, he became the face of the school's Deaf President Now movement, which led to the selection of Gallaudet's first deaf president. In, in 2015, he received the Individual Leadership Award from the Howard County Commission on Disability Issues. Mr. Leibach holds a JD from Hofstra's Maurice A. Dean School of Law. President Poser, in honor, in honor of Gregory Leibach's career achievements, community leadership, and lifelong advocacy for equal access and opportunities for deaf individuals, it is my honor to present him to you as a candidate for the Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. The Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa is awarded by Hofstra University to honor exceptional individuals for their outstanding career achievements. Gregory Leibach, it is my privilege to welcome you back to your alma mater and bestow upon you the Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa in recognition of your professional accomplishments and your tireless advocacy to ensure equity and access for persons with disabilities. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all. And congratulations to the class of 2023 graduates. Pa! Pa! This is the American Sign Language version of finally. We celebrate you as you have earned your way to this special day. You all share this unique experience in making history as graduates since you had weathered through the COVID pandemic period. Please take a moment to look around and acknowledge your loved ones who had given you their encouragement and love and support in reaching your achievement today. Really, I am blessed to be here with my remarkable family, my wife, parents, children, and brother. They have been my greatest supporters and it is an honor to be standing here before you as I have come full circle since I graduated right here from Hofstra Law School 29 years ago. And the interpreter who is voicing for me, the interpreter who is voicing for me right now, Stephanie Lewis, was the same interpreter that I had during my law school year studies. I want to let you know that Hofstra has had a prominent role in the disability rights movement. And there are many reasons why. Hofstra accepted me as a law student 
in 1991, which was one year after President Bush signed the landmark legislation, the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA, which granted every American with disabilities equal rights and opportunities. While I was here as a law student, I had the honor and privilege of meeting two champions of disability rights, Dr. Frank Bowe and Paul Hearn. Frank Bowe was a distinguished professor in Hofstra's disability study program for many years. And at times I would walk across the campus to seek his advice and wisdom and counsel. He's considered as the father of Section 504 as he was the main author of the world's first civil rights provision for people with disabilities. Paul Hearn was an alumnus of Hofstra and presented in my law class. He was one of the forces behind the passage of the ADA and with his contribution on the drafting of employment's rights section. Moreover, I was fortunate to participate in the newly established disability law clinic here at Hofstra, one of the first in the nation. In addition, Hofstra was the host site of the Empire State Association of the Deaf Conference, where my father, who is here with us, served as chair of the conference in 1993. This reflects Hofstra's leadership and longstanding support for people with disabilities. The ADA is especially personal since the Deaf President Now movement, DPN, was the catalyst in the passage of this bill. Senator Tom Harkin, who was a key sponsor of the ADA, and Justin Dart, the father of the ADA, remind me of this each time we met. They had an important role in the ADA. It started 35 years ago on March 6, 1988, when students at Gallaudet University protested and they said enough is enough and took control of their own destiny by shutting down the entire campus in a nonviolent way. They put their foot down and demanded that it is time for Gallaudet University to keep true to its promise after 124 years to provide higher education opportunities for the deaf in various professional capacities. That was the students and the deaf community's response to the Gallaudet Board's decision not to choose a deaf candidate to lead. Gallaudet had several qualified deaf candidates at the time who had applied. However, attitudinal barriers and misperceptions obstinately remain in our society. That an individual must be able to communicate over the phone to carry out one's job responsibilities. At the time, I was the student body government president leading the protest, and we proved to the world that this kind of perception was woefully incorrect after all. A deaf candidate, I. King Jordan, was eventually selected as the first deaf president and he turned out to be among the most accomplished college presidents. He managed to expand the endowment fund by 2,900% and worked effectively with Congress in passing several key legislations to promote accessibility and rights for the disability community such as the landmark ADA and built-in captioning functionality in televisions. 
deaf president now is being reported as the first successful nonviolent student protest on a college campus in history. Deaf President Now was not the result of my leadership and student activism alone. This milestone event was the result of hard work and perseverance, large and small, by many advocates in the deaf community for many years who stood up for the rights of deaf people for decades, including my parents here. I was born in a world designed for people who can hear and talk but my family was a rare exception. My home was a barrier-free environment where my father, mother, and three siblings are all deaf. The moment I set foot outside of my home, I experienced barriers. However, my parents instilled values in us to empower ourselves and acknowledge that barriers are artificial, essentially an illusion. We were raised to be independent thinkers with a nothing is impossible attitude. We would engage in countless dinner table discussions, figuring out ways to overcome obstacles, especially on the education of deaf children. We ended up with the same conclusion each time, which is that it is up to each of us to act in making a difference, to be a change agent. My parents did just that by being active themselves in the deaf community as an advocate for our civil rights. In my youth, I would help with inserting flyers and envelopes about an upcoming rally and participate in one such as the CBS headquarters to fight for our rights to caption TV shows. And another one I attended in Albany on protecting the educational rights of deaf children. History tells us that it takes one to experience some type of barrier to be an advocate for a certain accessibility feature that eventually enhances usability for all users, not just those with disabilities. For example, caption televisions allow any viewer to follow the program in a noisy environment, such as airports or bars, something that benefits everyone, and in addition, the text to 911 functionality, which benefits deaf individuals in an emergency, also benefits any hearing users to text silently to 911 in a dangerous scenario, such as when hiding from an intruder. These are examples of advocates with disabilities who fought for accessibility which resulted in benefiting the general population, not just themselves. Therefore, accessibility is not just a nice thing to have, but it is a must to have. The fight is not over as we have significant gaps, especially in the areas of communication access. I, for example, am un unable to send a geographic location when I'm on the road while connected to the video relay service in an emergency. We have been pushing the Federal Communications Commission to allow investment in research and development in order to close this critical gap for the sake of safety. When I was a first grader, I transferred from a 12 student classroom with full access to communication at Lexington School for the Deaf to a 40 student classroom without access to communication at a public school. It was the educational system's subtle attempt to mainstream me because I had the ability to make good use of hearing aids and could speak. 
However, I couldn't really follow much that was said in the classroom and therefore couldn't participate much in the classroom without an interpreter. I got bullied, I got into fights, at times mainly due to the lack of communication. My parents encouraged me to hang in there, but I gave them the silent treatment for quite some time. When they realized what was happening, they eventually agreed to transfer me back to Lexington School, and that, I consider, was my warm-up session in preparation for the Deaf President Now protest. At the beginning of the Deaf President Now protest in 1988, when students took over the campus, the moment the Gallaudet board selected Dr. Zinzer, I was in a newsroom preparing for a live interview in the studio. The newly appointed hearing president, Dr. Zinzer, had impressive credentials as a vice chancellor of the University of North Carolina in Greensboro, but she was not the right person to lead Gallaudet. It was the very first live televised interview for the protest, and I sat with another deaf individual who was an alumnus of Gallaudet. We were not afforded any prep time, and the TV reporter just jolted straight forward with a question for the deaf alumnus, why is it important to have a deaf president at this time? Why isn't Zinser qualified, given her strong record and that the board had already considered all the factors presented before them. That was the question. There was a long, silent pause as the deaf alumnus hesitated to answer. I felt uneasy knowing that there were many attentive viewers watching with great anticipation for this answer. I was afraid of any misspoken words which could spell disaster at the beginning of the protest. It could give the wrong impression that we did not have a credible explanation on why we were protesting. So at that moment, I had to step up to the plate right away. I took over and answered straight from my heart. I explained that Dr. Zinser was not qualified because the board failed to consider one key criterion that she lacked. She basically had no experience in the education of the deaf and could not communicate in sign language. The issue was not with Dr. Zinser, but with the board's lack of confidence in a deaf person's capability. This was a decisive and self-assertive move, and the rest became history. <laughs> therefore, therefore, I have some words of advice for you. Critical moments call for bold and decisive action. These critical moments do not come announced beforehand you need to be decisive and take charge if that happens, because moments like this do translate into an opportunity for you to seize. The more you take in those moments in a decisive and courageous way in your journey, the more you will build greater confidence with taking on the next opportunity in store for you. Stepping up to advocate for the advancement of deaf people and for rights to communication access has been my lifelong value. Like many Americans, the ADA had a significant impact on me. As soon as I graduated from Gallaudet in 1990, I went on to work at a law firm which provided sign language interpreters as an accommodation as required under the ADA. 
The ADA created employment opportunities for people with disabilities, including me. For example, the ADA mandated the establishment of a nationwide telecommunications relay service, which led to the formation of several relay service companies, one of which I currently serve as a chief legal officer. We have come a long way from decades ago where there were no telecommunications services available for deaf people. Back then, we would have no choice but to stop by unannounced to visit friends. Also, in those days, we would rely on our hearing members of our family to make a simple phone call. I remember growing up with stacks of frozen cakes in the freezer, readily available in case our deaf friends showed up at our doorstep unannounced on a Sunday afternoon for a chat. Today, we reach out at the convenience of our fingertips. In the past, like everyone, I would be asked by grown-ups what I wanted to be when I grew up. I said I would like to be an attorney because I tend to be a logical thinker and I like to engage in any intriguing discussion. However, I did not get a positive response, nor much encouragement, as it was perceived at that time as unrealistic. That was in the 1970s. They would inquire as to how I would be able to litigate in court without being able to speak fluently, and that I would have to use a sign language interpreter where there were very few interpreters qualified to interpret her in a legal setting. They pointed out that the few deaf attorneys at that time could speak for themselves. I took that in and agreed at that time. That moment in steel instilled what I call F-E-A-R. I will get back to you about what I mean by this. But now, just recently, Gallaudet University and the U.S. Naval Academy hosted a debate on whether the deaf should be allowed to serve in the military. The mere fact that such a question was sufficiently worthwhile for discussion tells us how far we have gone from a fear, F-E-A-R, state of mind, to an H-O-P-E, hope, state of mind today. As a child, back in the era of fear of the impossible, it was unfathomable to even imagine this as a possibility. However, today we can say anything is possible and there is always hope that will bring us far enough to consider any possibilities. Including the possibility for a deaf person to serve in the military. This speaks to the significance of the deaf president now movement as it was a message of self-assertion that we can do anything we aspire to be. In today's society, studies show that we are more socially isolated. Although we have greater access to more information and resources, yet we are invisibly isolated more than ever. This is because we experience less human interaction and the impacts of the pandemic did not help either. Such isolation is one of the main causes of the deep division in our country. The internet and social media, controlled by algorithms that narrow us into our own worlds, pushing us into our comfort zones, which diverted us down a very dangerous route, limiting our ability 
to use our critical thinking skills and to appreciate others' varying viewpoints. Imagine people from all walks of life assembling in a garden without any influence of algorithms and with sustainable resources and necessities to live on. We would explore freely to understand various viewpoints and work on figuring things out with mutual respect. And that would eventually lead to a sense of camaraderie. Now with the emerging artificial intelligence technology that propels our society into uncharted territory. Who knows what the future brings? An era of AI may seem more convenient and stress-free. However, we must be mindful not to allow AI to cause us to lose our ability to maintain our creativity and originality. Rather, we should let hope, H-O-P-E, instead of fear, guide us in the transition to the AI era. Keep in mind that F-E-A-R stands for false evidence appearing real. But but H-O-P-E stands for have only positive experience. Just as Helen Keller said, blindness separates people from things, deafness separates people from people. That was said during the fear era, but with today's hope, we have communication technologies that serve as a bridge between us. The only real barrier is the misperception of the deaf people's abilities. Last but not least, only you get to write your own story. Yes, the world constantly changes in front of you, but don't lose sight of who you are. Stay connected, find your balance in life, Live with a strong sense of purpose, with H-O-P-E, hope. Embrace and carry it with you as you embark on your new journey. Go out and make a difference in this world. Make it better in whatever way you wish it to be, whether it's more peaceful, cleaner, healthier, accessible, or inclusive. Congratulations to you, the class of 2023. I I hope and wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Mr. Leibach, for using your words to really paint vivid pictures for us, for your lived experiences, and particularly thank you for your incredible advocacy throughout your career. It's remarkable to hear and have lived through those changes uh, for the last three decades. Your profound impact in changing society and changing our country is very much appreciated. We're blessed and proud to count you among our alumni. Thank you. So now I'd like to take a moment to recognize our 2022-23, try that again, 2022-23 Teacher of the Year Award recipients. Excellence in teaching and student learning are our highest priorities at Hofstra. 
and we pride ourselves on the quality of teaching and learning that takes place all across our campus. It's therefore an enormous honor for someone to be selected as Teacher of the Year. Every year, our students select recipients for this singular honor. This morning, we are joined by recipients of the Teacher of the Year Awards. Please stand as your name is called. In the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, the Calico School of Government, Public Policy, and International Affairs, Julie Byrne, Professor of Religion. In the School of Humanities, Fine, and Performing Arts, Stephen Smith, Professor of Comparative Literature, Languages, and Linguistics. In the School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, Jessica Santangelo, Associate Professor of Biology. And I would ask all three to come forward and be recognized by President Poser. And now, to the part of the program you've all been waiting for. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Science in Education degrees please stand? President Poser, I have the honor to present those candidates from the School of Education, the Calico School of Government, Public Policy and International Affairs, the School of Health Professions and Human Services, the School of Humanities, Fine and Performing Arts, the School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, and the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, who have all completed the degree requirements for the bachelor's degree. I join with the faculty and the deans of our schools and colleges in recommending that you confer the appropriate degree upon these candidates. Graduates, by virtue of the authority vested in me, by the trustees of Hofstra University, and by the regents of the state of New York, and upon recommendation of the provost and your deans and your faculty, I am pleased and proud to confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, or Bachelor of Science in Education as appropriate. You are now entitled to all of the privileges and opportunities afforded by your degree. Our heartiest congratulations. As you cross the stage, we invite each graduate to decide whether you would like to shake hands with those greeting you and congratulating you. There is certainly no expectation either way. As the graduates are stepping forward to be recognized, they will meet their dean and their hands will, and they will also meet uh, President Poser and Trustee Stella Mendez. Your names will be read by Jean Giebel, Senior Associate Dean for Curriculum, Personnel, and a professor of drama in Hofstra's College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Mark Laplatner, associate director and assistant professor of physician assistant studies in the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, Anthony Porcelli, senior assistant dean in the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing 
and, efficient, and Physician Assistant Studies, and Stacy Zalewski, Senior Associate Dean, the School of Education in the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. You go. Olivia Kutch. Alexandra Bessiker. Talia Richards. Shelby Von Hefty. Tanisha Reddy. Adita Daljanin. Manveer Kaur. Madison Snuffer. Lucas Manolis. Rocco Valentino Cavadini. Patrick Koholik. Tyler Dunat. Sladin Ayubi. Ryan Patina. Caitlin Redican. Raven Gonzalez. Jennifer Fink. Tanya Perez. Santino Rosso. Kevin Brueggemann. Etiman Kaur. Abigail Kolokowski. Grace Kokosko. Kristen Hale. Ritika Michael. Jacqueline Bourgeois. Nicholas, Nicholas, excuse me, Mead. Gianna Corlorlis. Abigail Marie Eck. Elena Fan. Ayush Ja. Marrakesh Cunliffe. Madeline O'Connor. Carl Antoine. <laughs> Kayla Steinloff. Gina Laramore Jones. Raviv Levon. Margaret Moore. Karima McCall. Sarah Gibson. Maddie Brown. Pardis Sadiqa. Lahendra Adelson. Margot McCormick. Kara Scanio. Catherine Fiola. Lily Basali. Marissa DeVito. Christian Thomason. Aaron Lieberwitz. Maxi DeBizo. Ella Sullivan. Rachel Breidbart. Jing Wang. Pia Lithra. Sabrina Ali. Asma Azam. Sidra Nadam. Alicia Pramatis. Jackie No. JD Witten. Chanel Thornton. Raven Davis. Dario Mendez. George Kikulis. 
Christine Danielle Fernando. Brian Malloy. Hung, Hung Jae Jo. Timothy Jobson. Alexis Anderson. Rosalie Nicholson. Tyler Thomas. Nizreza Sarah Nwankwo. Nereza? Nereze? Sarah, Sarah Nwanko. <laughs> Jasmine Charrington. <laughs> Fabiola Belazari. <laughs> Chase Morris. <laughs> Evelyn Hernandez Velez. Daniela Papalewski. Melanie Moquait. Bridal Lazo Dinohu. Megan Borowski. Stella Rose Wyatt. Haley Rogers. Lauren Rook. Akrita Sharma, Jamie Jacob, Anjali Mohan, Hai Hu, Elizabeth Hurlbert, Hi, Ashley Boone. Megan King, Giselle Rodas, Brian Perez, Shana Balaji Prahu, Seha, Sneha, <laughs> Sonaya. Lamy, Pamela Vallejas, Kayla Staticker, Cassandra Axis, Cassandra, oh, Cassan Axis. Kayla Ferguson, Dino Capizario, Richard Lamoth, Dylan Poyano, Noah Hoffman, Lamis Brock. Emily Miranda, Kira Campaverdi, Daniel Prishinaro, Zachary Kernzer, Joseph Mirano, Andreas Gusenkind. Ekaterina Fakinos, Alec Dano, Jason Valverde, Daniel Dimanhina, Hian, Cameron Gallagher. Sydney Kenton, <laughs> Chloe Leatherman, Jonathan Grimes, 
Matthew McDermott, Marcello Gomez, Lindsay Hill, Amanda Laperta, Caitlin Cameron, Sinjitu Bhattacharya, Abby Lynn Muse, Pilak Manina, Gabby James, Isabella White, Luke Farrell. Isuntu Nidor, Cody Mular, Santiago Zia, Shana Ryan, Olivia Bevinetto, Maxwell Clegg. Gavin Gersten, Jessica Luger, Alexandra Heyman, Meredith Kass, Nicholas Burtz, Sebastian Joseph, Zachary Abolakam. Trey Rogers, Sophia Massarelli, Marilyn Van Der Get, cum laude, Sydney Laguillo, Jesse Kenworthy, Ryan Dumouse, Suzanne Ali. Jasmine Sunny, Albrecht Selius, Shane Shana Tracta, Tracton, Afaya Aladdin, Nathan Monga, Alina Quirshi. Amina Sher, Mia Latvala, Chloe Johnson, Natalie Orego, Isabella Negron, Nicole Politano, Rachel Hart. Lisa Morgenthal, Aaliyah Stone, Madeline Pressman, Alexandra Montana, Justin Conklin, Filipos Christodoulou, Kathleen Hall, Rachel Riddell, Shahem. Julia Shahem, Alexis Gable, Cassidy Donahue, Rois Nobel, John Colato, Angelina Duran. Rosemary Placeres, Naisa Aim, Kamala Garces, Garc oh, Camilla Garces, Austin Green, Avery Green, Sybil 
Ekloff. Yasmin Abru Cardosa Cunha. Brianna Dietrich. Sarah Kirby. Jessalyn Brito. Egla Samuel Asafa. Carissa Kasun. Musette Marcel. Catherine Salmon. Catherine Choma. Nicole Lawson. Edward Avia. Annie Jelsius. Noah Mohamian. Dino Devovic. Eric Lee. Prabjot Singh. Rishav Singh. Aliyah Yunus. Jaimina Carte Hina. No? Jimena. Jimena Carte Hina. Keona Green. Kiana Green. Vivace Omar. Vivek Omar. Emmanuel Simmons. Jessica Bullock. Aliyah Mays. Davina Newell. Angela Constant. Akima Moulton. Janelle Ashley Marrero. Stephen Kier. Surendra Singh. Radha Maraj. Aiden Henry. Adam Yusupov. Alexander Bass. Aiden Kilgallen. Giovanna Dexter. Seth Moody. Rebecca Wood. Abigail Thompson. Brianna Acevedo. Avery Lagaris. Jaden Wood. Kia Sharon. Joseph Delacorti. Cameron Sarchi. Elizabeth Taro. Gabriella McAllister. John Campbell. Nicole Kennedy. Megan Cohen. Samantha Rich. Kimberly Bromwell. Amelia Firestone. Victoria Bagacci. Dante Ferguson. Lucy Hollebeck. Hannah Levette. Nicole Mandy. Ariana Wentworth. Caitlin Shea. Arshad Mahid. And Anrav Gusi. Jordan Kaner. Yu Cheng. 
Denny yes, Denny Shaha. Alyssa Chirazzo. Fariza Juman. Brendan Rock. Jessica Montana. Carolyn Fahey. Gabriella Gibson. Grace Pacone. Sydney Frank. Erica Isaacs. Bridget Henley. Charlotte Knight. Zachary Morris. Heather Fragan. Gavin Peterson. Molly Ginnan. Juliana Cantor. Michael Kolner. Ashley Rabol. Claire Riley. Oh. Chenya Wang. Kyla Sarabja. Alana Huling. <laughs> Jacob Kernara. Yeah. Anaya Colon. Maria Desario. Savannah Mayron. Julia Manwaring. Ariana Leibowitz. Alyssa Schmiedek. Antonia Nargentino. Grace Sheen. Brianna England. Adriana Garcia, Vanessa DeRoso, Alicia Augustine, Simbothi Vasena, Charlie Stout, Claire Huffman, Nicole. Kerr, Blake Stout, Amanda Larson, Kurndeep Kure, Gurpreet Kure, Jocelyn Campos, Ariana Rivnak. Ashley Pavlik, Sarah Holmes, Yelena Kuss, Caitlin Hunter, Irene Leary, Aiden Morin. Oswad Islam. Yeah, Oswad. <laughs> Angelo Patrizzi. Jeevan Dallop. Matthew Gopulchan. Christopher Miniaki. Delaney Young. Christine Janik. Diana Danielson, Rebecca Corey, Eric Shack, Anthony Joseph France, 
Julia Daisy. John Paul West. Catherine Di Maria. Lacey McIntyre. Marissa Drizwecki. Tara Lakanata, cum laude. Caleb Cogden. Jacob Sanchez. Michael Shoris. Sitara Rambrin. Isabella Isolano. Mary Grace Scotto. Cassidy Petalayer. Emily Limino, Zachary Cedar, Jennifer Diaz, Bernita Justinia Bui, Taylor Udim, Julia Calisto, Katie Donaldson. Megan Graves, Corinne Hemmer, Alexandra Gerald, James Riccardi, Jasmine Trong, Sergio Tushaprad, Nina Galway, Antonia Moffa. Grace Sanker, Julia Rosante, Lauren Balginer, Sarah Chartuk, Erica Chan, Caitlin Sanchez, Annalisa Emmett, Sophie Roy, Jack Goodman, Christine Corich, Ashley Santiago, Skylar Kirk, Sierra Warren, Danae Bayer, Nicole Ortega. Charles Shaben, Nicole Lashinsky, Anna Barantes, Natalie Clifford, Shelby Greenslade, Camille Quelly, Anthony. Mariana, Marianova, excuse me. Christian Farrelly, Justin Torres, Madison Caston, Alexa Marculi, Naomi Lebovich, Nadine Yassin. Nabil Sadik, Isabel Andwade, Jamina Jean Pierre, Jamia Jean Pierre, Aaron Estrada, Sehun Kim, Tristan Debida, Haley. Whitworth, Bridget Morris, Jessica Ann Giove Nilo, Asia Ward, Sungbin Park, Rurukaha Yat, Desiree. Leach, Jessica Lasazi, 
Nana Ajoa Kong. Asia Cole Archer. Jasmine Christopher. Moise Latif. Donovan Fuller. Kendrick Dessen. And now candidates from the School of Education. James Skopek. Hannah McDonald. Liana Scala. Brianna Brown. Jordan McDonald. Taylor McNelly. Cameron Tommy. Darren Yang. Gabrielle Romano. Oh, Gabrielle Romano, sorry. Samantha Sparta. Christopher Leonard. Ariel Gofarb. Jessica Sewalidis. Stephanie Chang. Gabrielle Suwicki. Hunter Higgins. And now the graduates of the School of Health Professions and Human Services. Madison McGee. Courtney Moyer. Anastasia Menshkova. Sofia Pavaltos. Haley Rose Nunez. Tiffany Robinson. Juliana Grossman. Mally Endemiskel. Alexis Ligas. Melina Giorgio. Melissa Schoenig. Alexis Carlton. Alyssa Matthew. Erin Kim. Kaylee Carney. Sophia Castaldo. Kristen Betts. Lauren Crystal. Nicolette Lisa. Marina Slazek. Alexandra Di Giovanni. Rachel Tarvella. Alexa Horn. Jillian Fager. Malloy Schwan. Carrie Kerri Ann Mackey. Riley Morrison Deutsch. Palma Bauman. Sabrina Korpak. Matthew Friedman. Sean Middleman. Lauren Varela. Jaden Leak. Brianna De Silva. Jamie Dinsneski. Mario Bencamano. Jennifer Wise. Alexandra Lovera. Gurnov Bobby Kang. Sarah Salob. Grace Sengstock. Kolpreet Kaur. Isabella Palika. Elaine Mayer. Jasmine Jones. Marcia Castro Santos. Gabriela Anes. 
Noor Tostemir. Brigitte Martinez. Shania Stencil. Kimberly Pastwizaka. Christopher Charlo. If Efron Saif. Shai Harnov. Carrie Bostrom. Kenneth Roll. Ryan Cummings. Max Gibson. Justin Dunarin. Miguel Giral. Hamdala Hassan. Catherine Kelly. Kendall Smith. Skylar Kuzmich. Anya Sutney. Marlene Fries. Samantha Tarpe. Tarpe. April Sanchez. Sarah Pierre. Sariana Anglero. Monica Torres. Daniela Valentino. Ashley Catapano. Samantha Pelarte. Lindsay Duarte. Elizabeth Cack. Aaron McKendry. Alan Kaufman. Brittany Sutton Daly. Sebastian Vitti. Gabriella Lovichuk. Thalia Kanhai. Natalia Vargas. Sungru Lee. Jenna Tragaser. Thomas Mingguang Wu. Danielle Schnittkind. Ifrat Hussein. Anil Rodney. Odris Infante. Jess. Jesse Cole. The graduates of the Hofstra Northwell's Nursing uh, School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. Tiana Wang. Margaret Wang. Joyce Omalayo. Tihani Tradri. Renee Chan. Tafani Tradri, Kristen Doyen, Juliana Feeney, Connor Fitzsimmons, Julia Jacklick, Erin Steinhardt, Julia Manafo, Madeline Sunday, Jennifer Keith, Claudia Benjamelli, Hita Sunny, Jade Fit, Jenna Kim, Anjali Mohan, Adalia Lal, Fortina Gazonis, Brianna Prasaro, Erica Scholson, Christina Cavallone, Emma McKean, Alyssa Matero, Anna John, 
Nadia Ramasar, Sabrina Burke, Kyle Delisi, Liliana Saunders, Gabriella Snow, and last but not least, Natalia Stagarkos. Well, congratulations again to the class of 2023. And to the families and the friends of our graduates, the mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles, and grandparents and nephews and nieces and cousins and children and spouses, thank you for being here today. And thank you for everything you have done to support these students. Students, if you would please stand, if you're able, turn around and let's show our appreciation. Thank you. I, I think they really appreciate you. Um, let's also take a moment to thank your professors, your mentors and advisor, and Hofstra staff members. These are the ones who helped to get you to where you are sitting today, not only by teaching you, but also helping you through challenging projects and assignments, supporting you in myriad ways, many of which are invisible to you, in student organizations, athletics, internships, clubs, residence life, dining, campus safety, and so forth. A big thank you to them. And please remember to share your future accomplishments with us and return to visit to mentor the students who follow in your footsteps. We need you now as role models for those coming up because that is what you are. That is what you have become by virtue of graduating today and becoming alumni of Hofstra University. And we need you as alumni and ambassadors for Hofstra to tell the world what is going on here at this most wonderful university. You are now our shining example of all that we do and represent. So once again, congratulations to the class of 2023 and Godspeed. Okay, one final order of business, one final order of business as you are now alumni, graduates, to make your commencement ceremony complete, I ask you to move your tassel from the right to the left to signify the end of your career. Welcome you as the newest members of the Hofstra University alumni. 
a community of 140,000 strong. Following this commencement, there'll be a reception for the graduates, guests, faculty, and members of the platform party at the David S. Mack Physical Education Complex that's adjacent to this arena. I ask if the audience remain in their place until the academic procession has left the stage. One final time, congratulations. Thank you.